Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. These two boxes behind me, they are actually, I would say, the beginnings of a pretty powerful portable power station, I guess you could say. So I think we should open up these two items from Veteran and see what we have. When you open this first box here, what we have is a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Look at that. First of all, it comes with a handle, so it makes it nice and portable. And then also in the box is a, a set of cables, which are two uh, four gauge cables, which, are, which we're gonna be using with this setup. And also a little, <laughs> that's awesome, look at this. And also, it looks like a little, uh, a little remote. Look at that, and it, it, it flips up and down, and it says on and off. And you can't forget the user's manual. All right, and in the second box, a user's manual, and a 100 amp hour battery, and some cabling, which is weird. And the biggest bag of silicone gel I've ever seen. And now you're probably thinking to yourself, Jim, this is just a 100 amp hour battery with a 2000 watt inverter. That's nothing like a, uh, like a portable power station. But just wait, check this out. On the side of this battery is actually a 12 volt uh, car cigarette lighter adapter, a USB uh, quick charge 3.0 USB-A slot, and a type USB-C port. And then also, there is a, another port, which I was like, I don't even know what that's for. That's where these come in. And what it is, it's a built-in MPPT solar charge controller. And you have your MC4 plugs right here that go to this plug that just plug in, screw it on, and now all of a sudden you can charge this battery directly from a solar panel. So let's go ahead and look into this and see what the specifications are for each of these. All right, first let's talk about this 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Uh, I like the fact that it has a handle because this whole thing should be kind of portable. It's made out of all aluminum. On the front, there are two uh, 15 amp uh, AC receptacles, an off on button, a quick charge 3.0 uh, USB-A port, and a USB-C port. There's also a small LCD display. And then on the back, we have our battery terminal connectors. I like the fact that it has these little covers and the connections are opposite to each other. So that's a, I like that little safety feature. I feel like all inverters should be like that. And then it also comes with a couple of cooling fans. And like I said before, this inverter does come with a four gauge cable and it does come with this little remote, which we'll have to, be, we'll have to try out here in a little bit. All right, and we also have this 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. The max charging current is 50 amps and the max discharge current is 100 amps. Um, it does say that you should charge it at 20 amps. That is typical for your lithium iron phosphate batteries um, of, of this size. And one thing I didn't know about this battery is that it is heated. So we have a heated battery and this battery comes with its own app. So we'll be able to monitor uh, stuff from our phone with this setup. When it comes to the connections over here, we have our 12 volt cigarette lighter port right here. We have our USB-A quick charge and our USB-C ports right here. And it also has this built-in 200 watt MPPT solar charge controller. Now this thing can accept from 10 volts up to 45 volts with a 20 amp maximum. And then there is also a off on button right here. This is your typical group 31 size battery. So that means it's 12.9 inches long, a little over eight and a half inches tall, and a little under six and a half inches deep. And this battery weighs in at 22.4 pounds. All right, just like any other battery, the first thing that you should do is check the voltage on the battery to make sure that it works. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, and if you check the voltage with this battery without turning the power button on, you can see that the voltage 
is only like 1.25 volts. But once you turn the battery on, on the side, it gives you 13.17, and that is perfect for how you should receive your battery. And I have to note that when you do turn the battery on, the, uh, the USB ports over here, they do light up so you can see what you're doing. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and charge this battery up to 100%, and then I'm gonna do a discharge test just to make sure that I'm getting the 100 amp hours that I paid for. So when I get that done, we'll go ahead and hook all this together and see what we can do. All right, well, this battery from uh, Veteran is uh, almost done with the test. I mean, we are down to 9.87 volts, and we're still pulling 12 amps. Uh, it shows that it has pulled 104.22 amp hours. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this test and charge this battery back up, and we're gonna do some high amperage testing. All right, so now I have the Veteran battery and inverter plugged in to do some high amperage testing. Now this test will just involve going up to 100 amps for five minutes. Uh, and what we're gonna be testing is the temperature of the wires that were given to us for the inverter. We're gonna see the inverter to make sure it can do it. And we're gonna look at the temperature of the inverter. Um, we're also gonna make sure that the battery can do it just fine with, without any issue. And we'll be monitoring the uh, amperage and the voltage of the battery while doing the test. Uh, what we're gonna be powering is a 500 watt heater and a uh, induction cooktop running at around 600 watts. And while this test is going, we're gonna go ahead and look at the app that is involved with this battery as well. So let's go ahead and start this up and I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, app on the screen right over here so you can kind of follow along with that as well. All right, first let's turn on the inverter by this little remote. There we go, the inverter's on. Now the inverter on standby looks like it uses about 0.6 amps. So that is probably right around seven watts. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and turn this heater on first. There we go. We're right at about 45 amps and the battery's down to 12.9 volts. So let's go ahead and turn on our induction cooktop to 600. High start. And now you can see we're pulling right at around 97 amps and the battery is down to 12.45 volts. Okay, let's start our timer. Now that this test is running, let's go ahead and look at the app. On the very back page of the manual, you'll see that there are instructions on how to download and install the app on your phone, your, either your Android or Apple device. Once you get it installed, here's what you'll be looking at. You can either use an account to sign in or you can just do a jump login and it will just log you directly into the battery after choosing it from if you have a list of devices. You can see my list right here, but I have it linked to the, to the battery already, so it goes right to the battery. And you can see right here, this is what you'll be looking at when you first log into it. You can see that our battery is at 97%. The voltage is at 12.59, even though the voltage over here says 12.3. Uh, the current is 102.33 amp hours coming out of the battery and mine shows 104.9 amp hours. And that means the power equates to 1,285 to 1,287 watts coming out of this battery through that inverter currently. Now remember that inverter is 2,000 watts. So this, this shouldn't be that big of a deal for this inverter. Um, it also shows the temperature of the MOSFETs, which is nice, and it shows it in Celsius and in Fahrenheit, and it shows it at 72.86 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, if you try to do history, uh, I don't think we've been running it long enough to actually see any kind of history. Uh, control, you cannot do on this app. Parameters, just gives you your basic information about the battery. You can change the Bluetooth name if you want, but then it just gives you the barcode, BMS model version, BMS ID, stuff like that. And then if you go to mine, that just tells you about if you actually did log into the app to use the battery, it just gives you that battery information. All right, our time has been five minutes and this, uh, this test went without incident completely. It was actually kind of boring. I noticed that the fans didn't even turn on even though it's generating like 1200 watts. So I'm gonna go ahead and push this inverter 
to see what happens if I can get it up to like 2000 watts and see how far it can actually go. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, we still have the, uh, the app on the screen. Let's go ahead and pump up our uh, new wave to 1300 watts. And now our amperage is 163 and it just turned off. Wow. Um, so we don't even need to do high amperage testing because the battery actually turned off. You can see the, the, the button is, is off now um, because the BMS went into high amperage protection. So that's actually perfect. And I said 163, 163 amps. So let's go ahead and try to get this battery. Oh, battery just booted right back up. That was about 30 seconds. Uh, the inverter did stay off, but let's go ahead and turn that back on. Heater is back on, new wave is back on. And let's go ahead and see on the app what we can get it up to when I do that test again. All right. Battery shut off again. That only took about, about 10 seconds, something like that. And uh, I saw the app got all the way up to like 1900 watts. So that's like almost the max of this inverter. The inverter still hasn't uh, turned the fans on at all. So I'm gonna set it back to 100 amps and then we're going to um, look at the temperatures of everything just to make sure that the temperatures are fine. Okay, well I've had this, uh, this running at 100 amps again for about two or three minutes and let's check everything out. There is what it's, there's what it's powering, right? There's what it's powering and you can see those are pretty warm. Um, the inverter itself, let's go ahead and get this out of here. That's the clock. The inverter itself is, I mean, it's 80, 80, 80 degrees. <laughs> it is 85 degrees Fahrenheit. I mean, I don't see, I don't see any issues with this inverter at all. That's, that's great. Let's see if I can get a little temp inside. 90, looks like it's going up to about 115. I mean, no big deal. That's awesome. Uh, the cabling that came with the inverter, uh, it's showing right around 100 degrees. 100 degrees Fahrenheit, no big deal at all. Oh, the fan for the inverter finally just kicked on too. So that's good. Uh, the battery itself has a little hot spot right here, but again, that's no big deal. It's only 95 degrees. At the terminals, we're looking at about 118 degrees. And it looks like there's a small heat thing. I mean, that's just the heat from the BMS. So honestly, no big deal at all. So yeah, I'm pretty happy about this. This is nice. The inverter is staying nice and cool, even though we are pulling 104 amps right now. And so yeah, this, this setup is actually really good for a 2000 watt inverter and a 100 amp hour battery. So yeah, when it comes to the high amperage testing of this battery, it shut off when it got to about 2000 watts or like 170 amps, something like that. And the inverter powered it the entire time. And this inverter, uh, even though it's a 2000 watt inverter, I mean, it's powering 1200 watts without issue, without even getting hot at all. And actually the cables that came with the inverter, which are four gauge cables, they're staying well below specs for this inverter. So if you get this, this setup right here, you can use everything in it with no problem. You don't have to replace the wiring or have to worry about uh, the protections of your battery. So that's pretty awesome, I love that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and test um, the input of this battery by taking it outside with a 100 watt solar panel and seeing what we get. All right, well now I have this Veteran battery connected directly to a 100 watt solar panel via the little port that they have and the cable that came provided. It connects right to an MC4 connection, which is perfect for a majority of your solar panels. And as you can see on the app, we are bringing in 84, about 84 watts of electricity from this 100 watt solar panel directly into the battery. We don't need to worry about solar charge controllers or anything like that because it's built in. So this battery is almost like its own little portable power station. You have connections for input and connections for inverters and USB and 12 volt cigarette lighter adapters all in one battery. And this battery has an app and I'm not sure if I told you, but this battery is heated. 
So we're gonna go ahead and throw it in my freezer for 24 hours just to see what happens. All right, well, I just pulled out this Veteran 100 amp hour 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery from my deep freezer. And let me go ahead and put the uh, app up on the screen here. You can see that on the app, it shows that the MOSFETs are at 13.6 degrees Celsius or 7.5 degrees Fahrenheit, which is way too cold for this thing to be actually charging. But the battery is heated. So I'm honestly not sure what this charger is gonna do. Cause so I've got an amp clamp on there because there's gonna be two things that are gonna happen. It's either gonna not charge at all or it's only gonna supply power to the heaters. And so the amperage going to the heaters should only be at a max, maybe like eight amps, something like that. And we're gonna go ahead and watch the app to make sure and see what happens there as well. So just to make sure you know what's gonna happen with this charger, right now it is blinking, a, it's blinking green. So that means it's on standby. When I connect this up to the battery, what's gonna happen is it's going to go to a solid red and that means that it's charging. So if this doesn't like it and it's gonna shut off, it'll only stay red for a couple of seconds and then it will turn a solid green. And that's basically the battery telling the charger to turn it off because it does not want to accept any charge. And if it does stay a constant red, that means it's doing something and that's why we need to watch the app and this amp clamp to make sure it's not charging the battery at 20 amps that this charger can do. So let's go ahead and connect it up and see what happens. All right, here we go. All right, solid red. Okay, look at that. If you look at the app, it shows that there is nothing going into the battery. But you can actually see the temperature starting to fluctuate because the heaters are starting to turn up because the amp clamp is showing 5.7 amps going into this battery. And what that's doing is it's turning on those heating elements, but it's not actually charging the battery cells at all. So this battery is doing exactly what it should be doing. It's not charging, but the charger is powering the heating element inside to get that battery warmed up as quickly as possible. And also, if you look at the app, on the upper right hand corner, it does show charging under temperature protection and that is flicked on. All right, so both of these items from Veteran uh, passed pretty much all the tests that I wanted to give them. I mean, the battery, is heated and it did exactly what it does when it's frozen and trying to charge. It passed the capacity test, it passed the amperage test, it passed the over amperage test. The inverter pretty much ran everything that I wanted to just fine. Um, and what's nice about this battery is, does, is that it does have built-in USB 12 volt plugs and a way to charge it directly from a up to 200 watt solar panel. So this right here is pretty much just like a portable power station. I mean, really, they put a lot of extra features into this little set than, uh, than I've seen in other batteries and inverters. So if you have any questions about the Veteran 100 amp hour 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery, or the Veteran 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter, please leave them in the comments. I'll have a link to these items in my description just in case you want to look further into them. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day. Bye-bye.